Hi everybody. Today I'm going to try to walk you through the process of installing 64-bit SAS for Windows. This is the SAS that you're supposed to order from the SRS website from the Georgia State Board of Regents. Once you order it, you'll receive this on a flash drive in the mail. All you have to do is plug the flash drive in, browse to the top directory of the front flash drive, and click on double-click on the setup uh, exe file to start the process. Once you start the setup exe file, you're going to see this window come up. And this window could last anywhere from a couple of minutes to several minutes before it actually starts the, the setup process. Once the setup st process actually starts, it's going to ask you what language do you want to do the deployment in, and you can select any language that you're comfortable working with. Uh, in this case, I selected English. It's going to ask you what you want to do. Um, here, you want to leave the default, which is install SAS software. You do not want to select either one of these two options because if you do, you're going to end up installing everything from the flash drive on your computer and it's going to be uh, set up for a different purpose and you're not going to be able to use SAS. You'll have to uninstall it and then reinstall SAS and so you'll waste a lot of time there. It's going to ask you where that you want the program to go. Uh, the default is SAS Home under your programs files. You can put it somewhere else if you want, but the best thing to do probably if you haven't already installed SAS before on your computer is to leave this as the default home directory. It's going to ask you what do you want to actually uh, install on your computer. Um, the selection is perform a planned deployment by default, but in this case what you want to do is install SAS Foundation and related software. In terms of the products to install, you can leave these as the default. Uh, you can scroll up and down here and see what you're actually installing. Uh, you're going to be installing Enterprise Guide. You're going to be also installing Base SAS. That's what we're going to be using most often, Base SAS, which is SAS 9.4. If you've got a 32-bit computer, I would suggest that you leave it. I mean, if you've got a 64-bit computer, I would suggest that you leave it in 64-bit native mode. Um, it does create a couple of problems that you will notice that's associated with Excel, using Excel and SAS together. Um, you can avoid some of these problems by using the 32-bit compatibility mode, but what that does is it handicaps SAS. Uh, it's going to make it run slower, and so if you're working with bigger files, it's going to uh, potentially uh, mean that you're going to be wasting a little bit of time every time you run SAS. So, like I said, I would suggest keeping it, keeping it in 64-bit native mode. Here, it's selecting the SAS Foundation products. You get base infrastructure uh, for Hadoop and some other uh, nice little um, additional things that we're not going to be covering in class, but you can leave these as default. Just simply hit Next. Uh, here can be a somewhat tricky spot. This is asking you where the installation file is. This file is what's used to register the software to make it activate. Uh, SAS runs out every year. It's an annual subscription. It's not a perpetual license. So each year you have to point SAS to this license file that you purchase. And so the disk that you're using, the, the flash drive that you're using to install SAS should come with the most recent file on it that will allow you a year's worth of access to SAS. Uh, but if you've already installed this before, then all you need is access to this file. But if it's not in this location, then what you need to do is browse to the new, um, what we used to refer to as the set init file. Uh, this registration file has to be in place for SAS to actually operate. And this tells you what the expiration date is for SAS and for this installation it's the 30th of June 2016. Uh, in this case here um, I deselected all of the other languages. English is selected by default. 
but if you prefer you can also select one or all of these languages to make them available for you so that you can see the instructions or the pull down menus in the language of your choice. Uh, here it's just asking uh, for regional settings and I left this as def the default of US English. I'm installing SAS Foundation 64-bit. Then this goes through the process of checking all the system and determining whether or not SAS can actually be installed on your computer. It's checking for disk space, it's, it's testing for the speed of your processor and the amount of RAM that's available. And you can see here that this installation requires almost 13 gigs of space. It's a really large file or a large group of files. Okay, once you get through that, it's going to start the actual installation process and you can follow the overall progress of the installation along this bar. And once the entire SAS software deployment is completed, you click Next. It will ask you if you want to automatically, ascend, uh, automatically send this information about your installation back to SAS and you select Do Not Send next and this gives you some important links to SAS and the support that you can get um, as a student in the University System of Georgia and you click finished and then all you have to do is go to SAS 9.4 in your start menu start SAS 9.4 and this is the screen that you should see uh, you can close this and you'll be able to see the environment that we're going to be using to program in and do our statistical programming for the class in forecasting and econometrics. And so I hope this gets you through the installation process. If you have any problems, um, make sure you bring your questions to class and I'll see if I can't help you through each one of them. Thanks for listening and good luck.